So let's talk about a couple of little details that are going on with this whole process. Um, the first one that is listed right here, amino acid tRNA synthetase. Okay, that sounds like a really long, scary word, and it is, but it's not bad if you pick it apart. So first of all, it ends in ASE, which means it's an enzyme, right? So um, synthetase is usually talking about putting things together. Amino acid is talking about amino acids, and tRNA is talking about tRNA. So let's look at this picture to help you figure this out. So remember I mentioned that there's going to be tRNA that's floating around in the cytoplasm. So what's going to happen is that tRNA is looking for an amino acid that it matches up with. But it's not just going to click into it and everything is great. What's going to happen is there's going to be an enzyme called amino acid tRNA synthetase. And its job is to take the amino acid and to take the tRNA, put them together, and now that can go over to the whole translation process. So that's going to be a really important enzyme that's involved in this. Um, another thing that we need to talk about are the different types of codons. So if you remember, I showed you this chart, and there's a couple of important ones that we want to talk about. First of all, AUG is going to be the start codon. So that's going to be the one that translation is going to start with every time. Okay, so AUG is start. If you look at these ones shaded in kind of that salmon color, um, those are going to be the three stop codons. So the three stop codons are going to be UAA, UAG, and UGA. So those are going to be found at the end of the gene that you're translating or whatever is happening. So those are going to be really important when we get to the end of the process of translation, which we haven't talked about yet. So let me scroll down and find... Uh, let me see what's going on in our notes, and then we can talk about that. Um, so yeah, we have our nonsense codons, which are stop codons. Okay, so let's go back to my PowerPoint. And if you look, well, let's go through this again. So remember how we were talking about how you're going to do the translation process, right? So you've got your tRNA, another one clicks in next to it. The ribosome is going to create a chemical reaction that's going to make this chain that's been growing on this one pop over onto this one. That's going to leave the first one empty. So everything's going to shift over on the ribosome. And then the empty one is going to exit. And now you've got that one that has a long polypeptide on it that's going to be in that spot here. And the whole process is going to happen again. So this whole thing is going to happen and happen and happen until it's going to release or reach that stop codon. And so remember, the stop codon can be UAG, UAA, or UGA. And what's going to happen is those stop codons do not have a TRN that they code for. The only thing that's going to click to them is going to be something called a release factor. And so what's going to happen with that release factor is it's going to make everything kind of fall apart. The polypeptide is free to go get folded and it can turn into a protein. So that's the whole point of those stop codons. It's like party's over, everybody's going home kind of thing. Okay. So that's going to be how that works. So if you read through this part on the notes, this is just kind of talking about how the whole process is going to work. So um, I always tell you about it in prokaryotes first, just because prokaryotes are simpler. And then we can talk about how eukaryotes do it a little differently. And it's usually just a couple of extra steps or something like that. So what's going to happen is um, you're going to have tRNA carrying methionine, because that's the one that attaches to that start codon. And that's going to bind to the um, anticodon AUG on the mRNA. So what's going to happen is um, that's going to click into place. And then you may have noticed on the pictures I was showing you, there's the P site, the A site, and the E site. And so I have a cool way that for you to remember that. And I just need to go back to where that is. Um, let's look here at this picture again. Okay. So um, the way that it, so these are just kind of relative locations, and they're talking about basically what's happening in each of these locations on the ribosome. So we'll start with the P site. If you look at the P site, that's where the tRNA is going to be sitting that has the polypeptide attached to it, right? So the way I remember that is P polypeptide. The A site is where you're going to have a new tRNA with a new amino acid, so amino acid for A, clicking into place, okay? So then what's going to happen is um, eventually... We have all this happen that we've talked about. If you look, the one with the polypeptide is sitting in the P site. And if you look, the empty one is in the E site. So the way I remember that is E 
empty exits. Okay, so those are going to be the three spots. So the P site is where the polypeptide bearing tRNA is. The A site is going to be where the new amino acid bearing one is going to click into place. Um, and then the E site is where the empty one is exiting. So that's the way I, I like to use alliteration sometimes to help me remember stuff. If that works for you, great. If not, that's okay. Okay. Uh, oops, where am I? I am, okay. So, uh, oh, why, why is this? Sorry, my computer is freaking out here. Um, so what we're going to get into next are just kind of the different stages of transcription. No, sorry, translation. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So initiation is just getting everything set up. So you've got the start codon exposed, methionine on the tRNA is going to come in and click on the ribosome assembles. So it's basically setting up for the process. Then you've got elongation. Elongation is going to be this whole picture that I showed you over here, if I can get it to come up. This whole thing is elongation. And so I've written that out in the notes to kind of explain that to you. So elongation is going to be the process of elongating that polypeptide chain. Okay. Then we're going to have um, translocation. And translocation is going to be where... Um, the one with the polypeptide is moving over and the empty one is exiting that whole process. So that's translocation. And then the last part is going to be termination. And termination is where it reaches that stop codon. And that was this picture, if I can get it to come up, um, with the release factor. And so that's going to be termination. So termination is where it reaches a stop codon, release factor clicks in, and basically everything just kind of falls apart, right? And um, polypeptide can go and get folded into a protein and we're done with the whole process. So that's going to be the stages of um, translation. Okay, we've already talked about introns and exons and splicing. Um, the last thing that we're going to get into here is going to be mutations that can happen. So there are a couple of different types of mutations um, that can occur. Um, yeah, we can do this. Uh, no, that's okay. Okay, so um, basically there are a couple of different types. Um, a substitution would be like if you had UAA and that was what it was supposed to be and in some, for some reason it became UAU, right? That's a substitution. And so um, when you have that happen, there's two ways it can go. Um, the first one, a missense mutation, is going to be one that might change one amino acid, right? So it's not that big of a deal. So in that big, long chain of polypeptides, this amino acid should have been threonine, and instead it's arginine, but the rest of the protein is all okay. Um, that's usually not a big deal. A nonsense mutation, though, is a big deal. And what happens with a nonsense mutation is when that substitution happens, let's say it was UAU and it changed to UAA, that's a stop codon. And all of a sudden, in the middle of this process, you still have a ton of stuff you're supposed to be translating. Everything stops and you have an incomplete protein come off. Obviously, not a good thing. Um, then another thing that can happen is you can have what are called insertions and deletions. So insertion obviously would be if you had an extra nucleotide in there and a deletion would be if you took one out. The reason that's a really big deal is because then that whole reading frame is going to shift over because it only reads three at a time. So if you had these three that were going to be read um, and that one got deleted, now it's going to read that next one and everything's going to shift over one. So the whole thing all the way down is going to get screwed up. And that's the same with an addition as well. So those are going to be the different types of mutations. Things that would cause a mutation, um, radiation, sunlight, pollution, chemical exposure, those types of things can do that. And sometimes it's just a, a random thing that happens and that's how we evolve, right? Um, so the last thing here is I just kind of made a little chart of some differences between the process that we talked about in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So gene expression is another way of saying transcription and translation. That's the same thing. So in prokaryotes, they don't have introns, those spaces that don't code for anything, but eukaryotes do. Um, in prokaryotes, that messenger RNA that's created can have multiple genes on it, that copy of the DNA. But in eukaryotes, it's only going to do one gene at a time. Um, in prokaryotes, the process of translation, so that second part, can happen before transcription is done. And that all has to do with the fact that a prokaryote doesn't have a nucleus. So this is all out in the open. So why not start the second process if you have a little tail coming off anyway? 
in um, eukaryotes, the messenger RNA has to be completed, and then the introns have to be taken out, and then you have to have the caps put on, and then it goes out of the nucleus. So that has to be completed before translation can happen. Um, in prokaryotes, the process of translation, so that second part, is going to start at the um, AUG, which is that start codon. Um, in eukaryotes, technically, it starts at what's called the 5' prime cap. Um, so that's that little cap at the end. So that's where the whole process is going to get initiated, and then you have your AUG come up after that. Um, the next difference is that messenger RNA isn't modified before translation because they don't have the introns or anything like that, and they don't have to travel, whereas in eukaryotes, the mRNA is modified. And then everybody's favorite to list on an exam, um, prokaryotes have small ribosomes and eukaryotes have large ones. So that's transcription and translation. Like I said, transcription, not so bad. Translation can get a little technical, but if you take it a little apart piece by piece, it can kind of make sense as a whole.